Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. The other day, uh, I watched one of my favorite films, uh, Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon, uh, and I was reminded that uh, a while after that movie came out, that movie came out in 1999, uh, there was a sequel made, and the sequel came out in 2007, and it stars Rob Lowe as the main character. They're both on Netflix, so I checked this one out on Netflix. I had never seen it before. I remember hearing about it. I think it was a direct-to-cable production, uh, which is kind of telling in and of itself. But uh, Rob Lowe plays a uh, soldier in the National Guard uh, who's over in Iraq, uh, who accidentally, uh, because of protocols not being followed by other people, maybe equipment failures, all sorts of confusing stuff that happens in war zones, uh, orders his men to open fire on a vehicle approaching them, uh, approaching their checkpoint. Uh, that vehicle is subsequently uh, destroyed, uh, and it turns out that there was a family inside of the vehicle. Uh, and that's something that weighs very heavily on him in the moment, right before his squad gets attacked by a bunch of enemy combatants, uh, with a rocket launcher, uh, which takes out the only other survivor from this vehicle, uh, one of his men, and puts uh, Rob Lowe's character into a coma for uh, about a month or so. Uh, he returns home and has to deal with, first of all, reintegrating into normal society, uh, coming back to uh, his wife and teenage son, uh, and all of the friends uh, that he has there while still dealing with this massive amount of guilt he has. Now, because this is a sequel to Stir of Echoes, you know there's something supernatural, uh, paranormal, psychic that goes on here. And what happens here is that Rob Lowe's character uh, begins being haunted by this horribly burned uh, ghost who, who is pushing him to discover something. It's not really clear up front what that is. He uh, thinks it's, it's punishment for the attack that he ordered uh, that led to the death of the family. So that's the setup for this. Uh, and, and I watched the whole movie. It's only 89 minutes long, uh, which is 10 minutes shorter than uh, the original uh, Stir of Echoes. This is one of the most mediocre films I have ever ever seen. There is very little that stands out in it in any way, shape, or form. All of the characters are flat and, and so standard and expected that there's no surprises in this. Even the big plot twist isn't anywhere near exciting or interesting or really as meaningful as they try to make it be. And meaning is one of the things that they're very blatant and blunt about in this movie, uh, and that annoys me. They are uh, very big on the anti-war idea. They're very big on the, uh, you know, not being racist uh, against uh, Iraqis in this case. Uh, but they don't do it in any subtle way. They do it by basically telling you, hey, don't do that, or hey, this is a bad thing, and hey, don't think that way because it's bad, as opposed to showing any of it through acting or, you know, consequences other than the most blatant big deal ones uh, in the, uh, that, that come up. Uh, and Rob Lowe, who we know is a good actor, has next to no scenes in this movie where he gets to really act. Kevin Bacon in the first Stir of Echoes is kind of a force to be reckoned with. The, the passion, the emotion, the stress that his character is under comes through in the most raw and wonderful way. In this movie, Rob Lowe's character's PTSD comes through as staring blankly at the screen and getting into an argument with his wife and an argument with his son. An argument where 
he doesn't really emote in any way, shape, or form at all. Uh, and there's just not a lot of stuff to identify with in this character. Now, I've seen some PTSD stuff done in movies that is absolutely fantastic and dynamic and matches a lot more with what I've seen in real life from people who have been through really, really traumatic stuff, including people who've come back from seeing horrible things in the war. Uh, and all I can think is that the writer and director of this, who are the same person, which makes me think this is some sort of vanity project in a, in a big way, since he also seems to have himself listed a lot on the musical tracks, the, didn't actually talk to or interact in any way with actual veterans who'd come back from something horrible like this character supposedly experienced. And the way that the civilians, his family and, and friends, react and behave are just cardboard cutouts of stock racists. And there's nothing creative that goes on. Uh, there's nothing, no nuance that goes on. You can tell right away who everyone is and what their ultimate... Uh, fate is going to be because it's all telegraphed so clearly. Uh, and the way that the movie eventually plays out, there is no one that comes out of this good. And I have a problem with that, especially after the first movie, where, yes, the good guys suffered, but the bad guys really got their comeuppance. In this one, it paints everyone as a bad guy, including Rob Lowe's character, who didn't do anything bad willingly uh, or knowingly. And that's the big one. It wasn't something he knowingly did wrong. It was an accident. And his character gets punished in probably the worst way out of everyone in this movie, uh, aside from the one actual uh, murder victim that's the ghost haunting, uh, haunting him. His character gets his entire family ripped away from him and ends up in a mental institution. I don't understand why you would want a movie to play out like that. It does nothing to support any character-based argument. It goes on to support a thesis that this war is wrong and everyone involved in it should be punished, but that's not a very conducive uh, statement without supporting evidence. And there's nothing to support that in this movie. Uh, so I have a lot of issues with this movie. It's exceptionally mediocre. It's not awful. You may enjoy it. It's free on Netflix. Watch it, do a double feature like I did, and be completely mind-blown by the dichotomy between the two films. If you've seen Sturve Echoes 2, The Homecoming, let me know down in the comments below. We'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, if you uh, like the stuff I say, give me a thumbs up down there. And if you are subscribed, thank you for subscribing. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you get notified when these things come out. If you like the, if you know anyone else who would be interested in the stuff I talk about, share this or one of my other videos with them uh, and get them involved in the conversation. I'm Kier. That's it for today. Guess I'll see you tomorrow.